Hi, I'm Pete and I am stressed out. Today I'm going to put this MCV or multiple control valve assembly back on the 756 and I got some more assembly to do with it before it's ready to go back on. But in the past week or so since I tore this down, I've been doing all the research I can, reading the manuals and probably just as importantly going online looking at all the forums and seeing what kind of problems people have had and trying to anticipate things I might screw up. There's hundreds of forum posts on these. Well, maybe not hundreds, but I've spent maybe 100 hours reading them. And uh, there's so much that can go wrong. It can freeze you up. It can. Here's just a you know random sample of some of the problems I've read about. The gaskets between these plates can blow out. Look at this gasket. You've got hydraulic pressure in all of these passages and you've got these little teeny things that can blow out, you know. There's a sealing ring around this that's applied, but it's only around the highest, well actually this is the inlet, this is suction, highest pressure places. Look at all this stuff that can blow out, oh my gosh. Between the plates there's some O-rings, which, you know, you could easily forget. I had to measure out and make sure I had the right ones. At this port, in this port, there's just the two O-rings in this plate that go on with the gasket. And then there's one O-ring that goes on the plate that goes on the tractor. Those are easy things to miss. So I poured through my diagrams, this diagram. This diagram, looking for ports with O-rings and making sure everything was in the right spot. Looking again at the manual, at the operation of this thing and all the details. Looking at the INT manual and making sure there was nothing that was missing between the parts in the INT manual. Checking surfaces for flatness to make sure I didn't have any potential blowout areas on all these things. Plates, body. <laughs> this one's got a little bow on it, but I think it's going to draw down because it's just a thin plate. And here's an example of a screw up I already had that fortunately I recognized in time, went back and fixed a sharp viewer on the uh, first assembly video noted there's a seal that goes in this clutch dump valve, not an O-ring. And lo and behold, when I looked closely, yep, there was a seal in there. I went and swapped it out. There's so many things that can go wrong. What do I do in this situation? I've been in this situation before, lots of times. You just forge ahead. You trust the process and you be really conscientious and careful and make sure you stop every step of the way and check. Check, check, and recheck. I'm going to start assembling this and the first thing I want to do is clean off these gasket surfaces with lacquer thinner to get any oil residue off of them so that I have the best insurance of a good seal. And we also want to make sure that we have a nice clean gasket. And that the gasket lines up with all the holes. I don't know why these two are in here, but you can see on the old where they were also holes in the gasket and they're just blanked off. Don't know what the deal is with that. So we can put this plate on. And then there are three shorty bolts which hold this plate on temporarily until you get the rest of the bolts in. You can just look down there and see which ones have threads on them. And then you know those are the ones with the shorties. I'm just leaving them on finger tight because I want to torque everything down at once when I get everything in. Make sure I get the gasket seated evenly. The next job is to take care of the pump and this is the old pump. Remember I took this apart and observed all the wear in it. It's the old pump. It's a PESCO pump. It's got the logo on it. And this is a new pump from high capacity. It came with a key on the shaft but you got to take the gear off the old pump and put it on the new one. The new pump came with a new key. Right here, already installed. Gear goes on. Make sure it has, doesn't have any wobble in it. That would be no good. And the pump came with a new lock nut to secure the gear on and a new set of O-rings. That's about 1170 foot-pounds. I think that's tight enough. Next we flip the MCV over and expose all this business down here 
and wipe down this surface in preparation for a gasket. You know, there's so much high tran in here from assembly that it's just going to run, but I'm just doing everything I can to help this gasket seat. I'm really nervous about this one, this gasket. These are the, this is the gasket I've seen the blowouts on, the photos of the blowouts online, mostly in this area. Clean the side of the plate that mate, mates up to it. Oh, well, you're kind of dirty. Now we have this gasket that sits right on here. Test fit. Make sure everything lines up. Look for problems in the gasket. Little bits of dirt and whatever. Look at the other side. Here's something I don't understand. It's got sealant here, which probably guards from leaks against a higher pressure passage, but nothing over here, nothing around these port. Well, that one's got an O ring. Nothing around this stuff, but on the other side, it's got the sealant all the way around it. I don't know. And then this is a detail that is easily missed, I think. There's no ring that goes here, and there's no ring that goes here. And I'm going to dip those O-rings in high tran, and then set them in. And then this plate goes over the top. Now another cleaning on this side of the plate. And I can pop these plugs off the pump here that they just put in to keep it clean during transport and storage. See how it fits? Oh, I got oil on my plate. Oh, that's okay. Just got to set down on these alignment dowels. There you go. Now remember, we had a blowout in an O-ring right under here at the bottom of that O-ring when we pulled things apart. We saw that I want to look at how the pump sits on the plate and I don't see any gap from side to side there. Nothing there, it's all hairline. Nothing there either. So then we can pull this back off, maybe. <laughs> There's two O-rings that go on the back side of this pump. Let me get my high tran here. One in the inlet suction side and one on the discharge pressure side. Now one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a little bit of high tran in my pump. This is one of the little tips that I read about online. You want to just make sure there was a little bit of fluid in it when I got it, but you want to make sure you've got the gears coated on the inside because that'll help it prime. It'll help it suck in faster if it's got that fluid seal in it. Then we can go ahead and do the permanent install on the plate. That dowel is a pain to find. There we go. The bolts that secure the pump, you want to torque them down this aluminum pump body. 20 foot pounds is the spec, or 240 inch pounds on my little torque wrench here. Tilt this up and the bolts go in this side. Remember, these are the bolts with the copper washers on them. Before we pulled out. I'm just going to snug them down and then we can torque them. All torqued. I hear pump sounds. That's good. Next we got to get in here and clean this up. And I covered up all the hydraulic lines coming into it. They're going to need new O-rings and a little bit of cleaning. These are the transmission cooler lines here. And we got the brake line up here. That is easy enough. I got to take off these banjo bolts that, for the lines up to the transmission cooler because they got O-rings on both sides of them. There we go. There's one O-ring there, and then there's one O-ring that goes on here on the other side. I'm going to clean those up, change out the O-rings. 
There we go. Unfortunately, my MCV kit didn't come with the O-rings for these banjo bolts. I'll get to how they work in a little bit, so I had to dig some O-rings out of my kit here. Um, the parts manual lists, this, lists the size of the O-rings, so it's pretty easy to match them up. This has got two O-rings. One goes up here at the top. And of course, we got two fittings to do. CR11. Where did you go? Well, you know, I'm really, I'm just trying to put you in your home. This is what you were made to do, so you should be happy. And then there are two more slightly larger O-rings that go on after you put the bolt back in. Here's banjo bolt. See, it's got holes through it, so fluid can travel through it. The bolts go through these banjos. <laughs> they go through, and there's space inside of here for the fluid to come through the pipe and around out here and then through the holes in the boat, bolt and into the MCV. It's a good way of putting a bolt on and making a hydraulic connection where you maintain even pressure around the O-ring which sits in here. And so the banjo bolt with one O-ring goes in side here. Then we'll put the other O-ring in. There's banjo bolt number two. Then the new O-ring fits around here. It's kind of loose until you get it all tightened down, but it sits in that little recess there. This gets the same cleaning with lacquer thinner that I gave everything else. Dirty. There's also O-rings behind here. These are the TA. One is TA, one's direct drive, and one's lube. I think the top one's lube. Anyway, these are passages that go through to the TA. They have O-rings in the block there. I did not pull them out and replace them. I think that's normally something you do when you do a TA job, replace the TA. Next, I'm going to put in the sump check valve. Remember that pesky little plastic piece that I had ordered that goes right down in here? And I just wanted to say a few things about these guys. Remember I said in the last video that it comes into effect when you don't have the tractor running and you want to try and steer the tractor. For a while with these kits, and they don't at least with high capacity anymore, they used to put a steel plug in the kit, and they would say, well, you can just get rid of this and put the steel plug in. It's dangerous to do that because if, you're say, you're going uphill or you're going down the road and the tractor quits on you, you can't steer it without this in here. So that is not provided with the kit. At least it wasn't provided with my kit, and it's not something I would advise doing. The pressure, that one of the common reasons for replacing this was the end of them would either become worn off and, and you know, you'd need a new one, or uh, they would say, well, you're running a higher pressure in the MCV and so it's better to put a steel plug in. Not something I would do for sure. I'd hate to lose my steering going down the road or on a hill or anything and not be able to control the tractor. I put the check valve right in there and you can just see that white thing and then you got this teeny tiny spring which sits on a peg in the middle of the plastic thing and goes in just like that. And then as a way to make this easier to install I made up some dowels by cutting off long 5 16 inch bolts so that everything will align as I set it into place. I got four of them here. So we'll put them like that. I'm just about ready to put this in. Now, there's one other, well, what is this, the thousandth important thing? <laughs> this gear here that drives the pump meshes with the gear in the, in the housing of the tractor. And you want correct mesh with not too much or too little backlash on the gear. And for that reason, in these kits, you'll find these gaskets are all the same. There's three of them. I got a black one and I got two gray ones. And you have to match the thickness of the gasket that came out when you took the MCV off. So I kept a piece of the gasket. You just take a pair of calipers. The gasket measures about 18 to 20 thousandths. It's kind of beat up, but that's the neighborhood. The gray ones, that one's 20 thousandths. This one's 20 thousandths. And this black one, is 17 thousandths. I want to put in the same thickness gasket that came out so I'm going to use one of the gray ones and I suppose they supply a couple gray ones in case you need to build up 
even thicker than that, but you just gotta match what came out. We have just one O-ring to put here, and this is the power steering pressure port O-ring. Of course, I lost the transmission cooler O-ring, but that tucks right into that recess there. Keep losing these. You gotta make sure that's in firmly so it doesn't pop out when you're putting everything else on. And then this is the moment of truth. We slide everything together. Actually, probably the moment of truth is when I start it for the first time, but this feels important to me. Line up there. Okay, you don't wanna line up. We'll do this. Well, oh, you don't wanna slide past that. Maybe we just need two dowels to align it because I gotta get it past the clutch linkage here. You come down. Well, you don't wanna, maybe my dowels weren't such a good idea. I had read that they were a good idea. One helps a lot because remember, I got a spring right down in there that's gotta stay straight which it is, and then I got an O-ring over here, which I need to make sure it doesn't come out of its seat. It's still in there, so I can slide that home and maybe put the dowel back on now. gear on the pump needs to be turned a little bit. There we go. Yep, it's all on there. Now we have a ton of bolts to secure the plates and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six different lengths. So I'm just gonna go short to long on this. So this is the shortest bolt here because the surface is in far the furthest. Then I've got three mediums that go in this surface down here, because that's the next one out in the line. And then the next longest ones are these two right here, no boss on them. And the next longest are one, two, three, four here. We're getting toward the longest bolts here. Actually, I think these are all the longest ones. That's interesting, I got one super long one. Ah, I know where that goes. That goes to the clutch linkage over here. So I'm gonna have to put that linkage on before I tighten the bolts down. I guess before I put that on, I wanna tighten up the line that goes to the brakes back here. This is a compression fitting, no O-rings required. O-ring down here though. We want to make sure that that fitting is tight. There we go. Let's see if we can figure out this clutch linkage. You know it goes, forks go on there. And then we got to take out this bolt here. And we got to take out this bolt here. And that's going to take the long, long one. These two bolts go to the, the clutch linkage, clutch bracket that goes on here. So I left those off, but I can't torque some of these bolts with it on. So I'm going to torque these first, but I'm just gonna snug them down with the ratchet here. The rest of these bolts are specified to be torqued to 25 foot-pounds, which is 300 inch-pounds. And I found reference online to some IH service bulletin that had an order for torquing these bolts, but I could not find the actual bulletin anywhere, so I'm gonna torque it similar to the way that I would a head and start from the center and kind of work out. I don't know. I don't know if it really matters. It's not that much torque. You just want to make sure they're all even so they press on the gasket evenly and seal everything up. Everything's torqued down now. I can put this clutch linkage back on. Remember it engages with the clutch dump valve right there. 
And then we got the super long bolt. We gotta get it in the torque amplifier. Ah, plunger. Well, we're over here, let's put in the lube pressure sensor that turns on the light on the dash. When you dump the clutch. And we can tighten up these transmission cooler line banjo bolts. And start hooking up the clutch linkage here. This is actually the TA. This TA linkage gets cotter pin here. And a cotter pin way back in here on the plunger. I'm glad I don't work on modern automobiles because I'm not very good at working at things that I can't see. Operational. The clutch pedal has a whole bunch of stuff it needs to fit into. There's a arm back here for the safety switch. Let's see, which way does this go? Well, it's got to go through there. I'm a dope. All right, off you go again. Maybe we can leave the linkages hooked up and it'll just swing out. That would be awful nice. You gotta come around here. And in there. <laughs> All right, longest bolt. Kind of long bolt. In the clutch here, we've got a center hold pin, which is pretty clever. It's gotta line up with a hole in the linkage here. Sounds clever, but it's kind of a pain in practice because you can't see what you're going to line up here. There we go. And we have a little pin that goes in the dump valve linkage and a teeny tiny cotter pin. Then there's the other end of the clutch under the seat. We've got a bushing washer there. And then we've got a big cotter pin that holds it on. And the little cotter pin, which runs on a rod up to the safety switch here, which says, hey, Keep the clutch pushed in when you start the tractor, or it won't start at all. And finally, the clutch return spring. The last thing I want to get done today is transmission brake. Remember we pulled this plate off the bottom. Transmission brake is right here. Turns against the gear up inside the clutch housing. I cleaned off the remnants of the old pad and then I drilled and tapped a hole in here for the new pad which screws on and it was supplied with this countersunk quarter inch coarse thread screw. I'm gonna put some blue Loctite on the screw as extra insurance. There's our new transmission brake pad. Some kind of ceramic material I guess, ceramic metallic, something like that. I have a new gasket for this plate and I'm using gasket sealant high tack on this, both sides. You have to make sure before you put the back gasket on this, see how much travel I got in that? <laughs> yeah, that much. <laughs> well, there's a pin, a little pin that goes right in here that holds this in the correct in and out position. So you gotta make sure that's in there. And the gasket goes on. And then seal around the gasket. And this plate that I'm gonna put on with a transmission brake is right underneath the MCV. So if we look up in here, we can see the back side of the MCV pump there and where it meshes with this gear right here. This plate goes right up in here. We gotta swing the brake around. There we go. And the linkage for the transmission brake hooks up right here. I'm going to have to readjust this with a new brake on. I have to readjust everything. So I think what we'll do is we'll just leave this disconnected for now. That was stressful and a lot of work and a lot of stressful work. I'm glad that it's done. There's more to come though as far as this goes. Now after you get it rebuilt, you have to readjust everything. Remember I, last summer I adjusted the clutch related to the torque. Uh, amplifier related to the transmission brake. You got to get them all synchronized again and then after you get the tractor running, you put the gauges back on it, just like when I tested it, read the pressures off the gauges. I'll be doing that to make sure everything is within spec running and it'll be nice to see what the difference is. And lastly, people run into problems all the time with these priming, with repriming them after rebuilding them and there's a whole bunch of methods to reprime these pumps. 
the first and easiest thing to try is turn the steering wheel to the stops and see if you can build pressure in the pump that way if it's not building pressure on its own because that forces the pump into high, a high pressure situation when you turn the steering wheel to the stop. If that doesn't work, you can crack the safety valve down here on the bottom and run the tractor and see if you can get fluid air trapped in the system out by opening up that port and letting fluid shoot out the bottom of it. That's method number two. Method number three is to take off the transmission fill in the cover here where you would check and add fluid and put an air hose into it and um, put compressed air into it with a rag wrapped around the hose to kind of make a seal and pressurize the transmission and pressurize the MCV that way. And the fourth method is to make a fitting that goes onto your rear hydraulic remotes using the hydraulic pump, which is completely separate from the MCV pump. Plumb that line from the hydraulic pump up to the safety valve down here and work the hydraulic remotes to pressurize the MCV. You gotta work the air pockets out of it and make sure you don't get an airlock in it. So there's all those methods to do that. <sighs> We're most of the way there though. The next job is to pull this platform off and open up the range transmission. And maybe at that time I'll explain how these three, there's really three kind of transmissions here. You've got this compartment with the torque amplifier You've got the clutch up here, you've got a range transmission here, and then you've got uh, the regular transmission, and then you've got the rear end all one after the other in here. So maybe I'll talk about that a little bit. We'll, we'll open it up and see what the parking paw looks like, which is a little tooth or a little um, latch that engages the, the gear teeth to put it in park. And then we're going to look at the shifter because it's a little bit loose and see what it would take to put a kit into it to tighten it all up. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it was entertaining and informative and is of help to somebody down the line that's going through the same thing I have rebuilding one of these. Have a great day.